Welcome back. The previous video has led us through SWAT Plus Editor and running the model and visualizing the results without making many adaptations to our model. However, many times you may want to change specific options based on your case study. This video highlights important adaptations that you can make in SWAT Plus Editor. But first, let us open SWAT Plus Editor. To do this, we click on Edit Inputs and Run SWAT again. It will ask us whether we want to re-import our watershed. And if we have made changes in QSWAT Plus, we have to say yes, import new watershed. Otherwise, click no, continue to editor. We have not made any changes, so no, continue to editor. First, we will see the options for calculating potential evapotranspiration. Depending on the data available, you may want to use different potential evapotranspiration calculation method. For instance, if you only have temperature data, you may choose to use the Hargreaves method instead of the penman monteith method. To change the PET calculation method, first of all, go to Edit and click on the Basin section and select Codes. You will find a combo box for potential ET method code. Click on that. We see that by default, the penman monteith method is selected. We can choose Hargreaves method, Priestley Taylor method, or if we have our own potential evapotranspiration values, we can select the third code to read those values. We will leave penman monteith method for potential ET calculation. Other important adaptations you may want to make concern water routing. There are two methods for routing available in SWAT Plus, the variable storage method and the mask income method. We will use the mask income method. We click on water routing method here and select mask income method. More routing parameters such as the manings, and time of concentration for each channel can be found in the hydrology and sediment section under connections channels. Let's click on channels, hydrology and sediment. Here we see all the parameters we can change for each of the channels. One of the most important changes to SWOT Plus has to do with how land use management has been structured. Each HRU is assigned a land use management practice. We can see this in HRUs under Connections section, clicking on Properties. In this example, our land use management practices include forest, agriculture, and pasture. However, we do not know which crops are growing under each land use management practice. To find out more about this information, we go to Land Use Management and the Land Use Management section. In this section, we find all the land use management practices listed in the HRUs. We also find the plant communities where we can find out the crops which are grown under the specified land use management practice. Click on Agricultural Community. In this case, we have only one plant, agriculture, which is generic. If you want to add specific or more crops, you can click add plant to community. If you start typing in the search, SWAT Plus Editor is going to autocomplete for you. In this case, we might choose to add banana and put the land cover status at the beginning. For perennial crops, you can say yes, Initial leaf area index, the default is zero, but for perennial crops, it has to be something, and you can proceed with the rest of the boxes. We're not going to save these changes. Cancel. And we will return to the land use management table. Now that we know which crops are growing in each HRU, how about the planting dates and the harvesting and 
application of fertilizers, and all the other activities that take place in that kind of land use management practice. Well, you can find this information in management schedules. Management schedules is under land use management section. We only have one management schedule in our example. There are two methods of specifying operations in management schedule. You can enter an operation directly into the management schedule. For instance, if you have agricultural rotation, click on that. You can add the operation by clicking on add operation and this will guide you in adding the operation. For instance, if you want to plant, then you select planting or any other of these if you want a different operation. Let's leave it planting. When do you want to plant? You select the month, the day, and if you are in the US, you can go ahead and use heat units. You also have to specify the plant to which this operation applies. Make sure that that plant exists already in the plant communities, as you cannot schedule an operation for a plant that is not listed in the plant communities. We are not going to save these changes. The second method is by using automatic schedules. These exist in decision tables. For instance, I can say irrigation. If I click here, I can just say add and automatically you have scheduled irrigation. The importance of automatic schedules is that you can schedule activities based on conditions. For instance, if I click on irrigation, you can see irrigation only happens when the condition is satisfied. We're going to talk more about decision tables when we analyze inputs and outputs for our model. For now, let's go back and back. You can change default parameters which are in the databases. However, I would recommend using calibration to change these parameters instead of changing them in the databases. We will discuss decision tables in a later video and we will discuss the change section where you do calibration in a later video as well. After making all the adaptations to your model, remember to go back and write input files even though you have already written. Save and write these files. Start writing. And then you can go and run the model and re-import your results and see if there are any changes to your output because of the adaptations you have made. Try to plot the graph from before and after the adaptations in the same chart. In the next video, we are going to look at the input and output files that the SWAT Plus editor writes and also that result from running the model. After that, we will go into calibration.